I'd like to go through the methodology that over the last 11 years I've evolved with a young woman called Chantelle Ilbury. So I said to Chantelle, this is great stuff, we must write a book together. It took us five months and we published it in June 2001. And we called it The Mind of a Fox. What we decided to do in the book was write a letter to George Bush when he first became President of the United States, in which we said that part of his legacy as President would be determined by the speed and quality of his response to certain extreme futures that might come his way. And we nominated as his number one extreme future a massive terrorist strike on an American city which would completely turn his presidency upside down. And it happened three months after we published the book. We put a lot of effort into trying to, to, to identify the flags which would indicate that a particular scenario is coming into play. We had three flags. Number one was the growing confrontation in the late 80s between the major religions of the world. The second flag was the re-equipping of movements dedicated to the downfall of America in places like Afghanistan in the mid-90s. The flag that really clinched it was the two attacks on American embassies in Africa, one in Tanzania and one in, uh, in Kenya, which we felt was a dress rehearsal for the real thing in America. We've always wondered if we'd been allowed to present our scenarios to the American security agencies, say in June 2001, they might have re-perceived the genuine flags that they were getting that we knew nothing about. It came out in the Congressional Inquiry after 9-11 that there was a young woman in the FBI who went to her boss on six occasions and said, boss, there's a flying school down the road where Arabs are learning to take off but not land. <laughs> and if they'd actually followed up on that flag, they could have closed the whole operation down because two of the suicide pilots actually went to that school. What about South Africa against that fairly tough global uh, context? There are three scenarios. The first one is where we get our act together and we get back into the middle of the Premier League. The second one is that we don't get our act together and we slide gracefully and peacefully into a scenario called second division. If the flag of violence goes up, we move into a scenario called failed state. Now, for a long time, we gave a zero probability to that scenario, but we have four subsidiary red flags and one tendency, which is a continuous red flag, as a result of which we've raised the probability on a failed state. Number one is nationalization. The second flag is a clumsy implementation of national health insurance, which leads to a decline in private medical care. The third flag is why we've raised the probability on a failed state. It's gagging the media. And as soon as the protection of state information uh, bill was tabled in Parliament, we jumped the probability to 10%. The last red flag is the most toxic of all. It's land grabs. The RAND won't even sort of touch 100 to the dollar. It'll go straight through 100 to 1,000 against the dollar. Uh, we will face hyperinflation on petrol prices and yeah, we will go through the same level of economic misery that uh, Zimbabwe has gone through.